All right, it's not a very pleasant day today. And I've got something which I've did a slight video on many, many years ago. I actually made another video six months ago and it's about the B38 engine. And what I'm gonna do with this engine now is I'm actually gonna strip it and I'm actually going to show, hopefully, when I strip it, what goes wrong in more detail. And it'll be a complete video of this, so you'll see me undoing all the injectors and everything like that. So it should be quite interesting. So let's check it out. So what we're doing on this engine today, this is a B38 engine, three cylinder, and it's a common fault with the Vanos sprockets breaking, usually one, not usually both. And the reason is, behind this actuator, there's a hydraulic bolt, which is also a actuating, so actuating valve what the solenoid actuates. And the screen filter breaks off because the valve gets loose and pushes it out. I've done a video on this before, but today you're gonna to see me do this in full. So what we're doing is, we're gonna start by, we've cleaned this, we've got compressed air on to get all the dust off. And what we're gonna do now, essentially, is we're gonna set the injectors out once we've stripped all this sort of stuff off out of the way. Move the fuel rail, take the cam cover off once the injectors are out, and then we're laughing. But of course, then we need to time it up, and then once we've timed it up, we can start by undoing the Vanos wheels and we'll inspect them. So let's get cracking. Well, call me old fashioned, but I like to put brake clean on everything and then blow it off. As we are disconnecting the top of the engine, we don't want dust going inside, do we? You know what I mean? Basically. Call me old-fashioned, but that's a bit cleaner, isn't it? Don't you think? In my opinion. So essentially, what I'm going to do now with this, I'm going to take off the injector rail. Now we've kind of cleaned it up a bit. It's still not perfect. I'm never happy when there's all this dust on it. And we'll take the fuel pump and the injector rail off as one unit, kind of thing, maybe. And then you'll see how I pull the injectors out, which special too. So let's get cracking with that. Right, so they're loose, so all we need to do is loosen our fuel rail and pull our pump out, pipe and everything as one package. Just a bit easier that way. Keep everything together. ready to come off is that one fuel rail disassembled nice there we go see the benefit of stripping a fuel rail off in with everything is a you keep everything together and b last chance of contamination in that sense you can't build it up this way but you can certainly leave it that way so that's the rail, and there's a very special technique to building these injectors up, which I'm going to show you at the end of the video. Obviously, there's your fuel pump, there's the regulating valve, and that's the piston. If you put these in wrong, you bend that shaft, you'll end up with low fuel pressure problems. High pressure fuel sensor is there. Fuel feed is there. Done. Now, you'll notice on this engine, you've got these little, little bags. Throw them in the bin, and I'll tell you what they are. What these are is in the factory when they build these engines up. They inflate these with helium or another non-inert gas and they check, basically, if there's any fuel leaks. That's basically just a fuel leak detection system. Don't know what you'd use them for, but you certainly don't need to put them back. So just chuck them in the bin in case you ever wondered what they were for. 
So before we pull the old uh, fuel, the, the rocker cover off, we have to take the fuel injectors out. So what I've got, I've got a fantastic kit here from BDS, BDS Technics, German company, pretty damn good. And it's a B48, but we can of course just pull one of these out and use it on the B38. Basically almost the same engine, minus one cylinder. And the way this system works is we have locking cups like this. We're going to put them on and then basically use a left-handed worm thread, which is a strange looking thread, like that. And we're going to actually screw the injectors out. So it's basically just a like, like a puller. It's a very slow puller. Right, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm putting these on the injectors and they're going to go on, turn, and then I'm going to lock that pin off like that. So you turn it on, then you turn it 90 degrees and you can lock it and it's locked then, essentially. And we do the same with this one. Like so. I'll give you a close-up of that. So these, they go on, essentially. They're not so easy to get off once they're on. There's a little locking tab, you see. So, the injector's a certain particular shape. Don't worry about this thing, just slide it on like that. Turn it 90 degrees and then give it a wiggle and it'll lock itself in. And that's all your three set up to pull them. Then we just need to put this on here, like that, and then use the left-handed thread to wind it on. Right, there is some O-rings, I found one, but obviously lads have used this and they haven't bothered putting anything bloody back. It should be all rings what stop it falling off, so I'll have to just use my fingers in this case. Now make sure there's no fuel in the holes, you don't want to hydraulic the injector clamping, clamping holes and destroy the bloody cylinder. So that's something to be mindful of. So we'll put these support pieces on, try and hold it with our hands somewhat, there we are, like that, essentially. And then what we'll do, we'll just get, get it started roughly by hand, because we don't want to use any tools at this point because we need to still line it up. And it doesn't matter if it's a bit like loose at this particular stage. Ah, one thing I've just remembered. What you need to do with these, it's absolutely important, is pull this bloody thing off. Because if you don't pull this off, you, you'll end up damaging the, the, something because the tool will sit not straight. And that's why we couldn't get that thread in at the back. You see, now it goes in dead easy. That's something not many people know, and I've seen a lot of people crying about that. Right now, let's get this tool in. So what we need to do now, obviously it's left-handed thread, so you have to put them all the way down, so you turn them the opposite way, like tighten them. Like that. Or actually loosen them, should I say. You want them quite low like that. Now these pieces here now, you can put them in either before, like I was doing earlier, you can put them in now after, once the tool's lined up. But I like to now put them in like that, and just turn them. It can be a bit stiff these, so just be a bit mindful. Sometimes you might need to put a bit of grease on them or whatever. Not that so easy on this particular engine, I can tell you. It's a little bit awkward sometimes to get things out they need to be. So I'll give you a better view of this now. The locking tool is quite straightforward. There's the, there's the puller for the injector, you just whack it on, dead easy. Don't go too tight, just bottom it and then turn it back a bit. Otherwise they seize on later, like that. And the last one, number number three, or if it's a French car, number one, is a bit more tricky. And that's it essentially, and all we need to do now, now they're all on, is counter turn these. That way, to undo everything. Right, as simple as that. So, let's get these bottomed down by hand again. Don't be using loads of tools. They're very delicate, these. I actually snapped one of these injectors a few years ago. And once these are all bottomed down, we'll pull it out. So, all we need to do now is turn it. Like this. And that'll pull each injector out in turn. In theory. <laughs> Ah, 
materials back in the box so we don't lose all the oil, oil cap cover back on ASAP so we don't have any contamination in them. Safely removed. Right, so let's take a look at this tooling in further detail. And what we need to do now before we go any further is we need to put some marks on here so we know which is which injector is which so we don't have to read the codes after. Because we don't want to be messing with quantity codes and getting things wrong, do we? So what I'll do with this is I'll just put a couple of marks like that. One, two and one. On the body like that. And then I know which is which, so I don't get them mixed up. But I'll lay them out in order anyway. Here's a closer look at this tool. So you've got a release cap there, you see. Now, if you still had it in the car, what you could do is you can... You can essentially unscrew this. Like this. And these are the... They come off dead easy, look, you see. But here's the caps I was talking about these are automatic locks and you release it like that and you just turn it as simple as that and then what we do we just put caps on these stop any contamination going in so where we're going to go now well what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect these vanos solenoids these are the electrical actuators basically and behind them we've got the central bolts but then we're going to take the cover off and then we're going to time the engine up and then when the engine's timed up we can start stripping and find out if that uh, screen is damaged on the bolt and good luck if you've got a car with a transverse engine. If you've got a F30 or a G Series or anything like that, if it's rear wheel drive, bad luck, you'll have to take the engine out because there's no way they're literally touching the bulkhead. You just can't get anything in. It's a goddamn nightmare, basically, to, to even do anything on it. So thank God we're on a transverse one today. So what we're going to do now, essentially, is we are going to remove the Vanos solenoid. There's a special tool for this. There's two little indentations there. I don't have that tool, luckily. They're not so tight usually like that one. And this is probably what I suspect is actually faulty on our particular vehicle. This is the actual actuator bolt, and obviously the solenoid, the way it works, is it goes and pushes it and advances and retards the vanos by altering the oil pressure one way or the other. And I'm suspecting that inside it's all loose and damaged. So that's going to be really nice to see. I hope it's that. Either way, I'll be replacing everything anyway. Okay, so Here's the bits where we're going to put the tool on. There's some locking segments there. Of course, we have to turn the engine over. There's a little bit of dust there. Even though I you see, even though I cleaned it three times, there's still a bit of dust. What I'll do, I'll get the vacuum cleaner and I'll vacuum the rest of that out before I do anything so we don't get any dust in the engine. And coming around here, it's a very nice, simple setup. It's a little bit tight down the back, but I either way, it's not too bad. Once it's locked up at the top and we've locked up the crankshaft, the engine's safe. And then we can start pulling these off. And these are your bolts and also your actuators for your vanos system which definitely have probably failed and what you have to be careful on the old 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 b engines is these lifting fingers for the valve tronic these fingers used to fall off all the time off the ledge down there especially with taxis when they're idling all day long and there's the van there's the valve tronic actuator motor much more robust than them, the older ones Right, let's get it timed up. So in order to time this engine up, I need those QR codes at the top. Unfortunately, it's kind of gone past. So we're going to turn it over until they are kind of more or less this side. And then I'm before top dead centre. Then I'm going to send it up and I'm going to actually put my crank pin in. It's easier to do it that way. Then you're not 180 degrees out. And I'm going to use an extremely long extension. You might find unusual, but I'll show you why I'm doing that now. So let's, uh, let's check that out. See, I've gone way, but it's gone past there, you see, already. That's the problem. Now, the spark plugs are still in, so it might be a good idea to take the spark plugs out. For me, personally, I'm not usually that bothered about that. All I want to do now is get this engine turned over now. 
get them QR codes coming coming up, coming round, if you like. And that's enough for me. There, so the QR codes are coming round there now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep turning and I'm going to stop there now and I'm going to get underneath the vehicle and I'm going to look for the crank hole. Basically, if you leave this, it's on a sliding slotted mount, you see, and you can somewhat move it slightly. So don't tighten them up until you're finally ready. And all you need to do now is kind of lock them off now. And then we'll tighten them up, and then we can pull the sprockets off. Happy days. And what I'm trying to do is just undo the damn thing, and it's extremely challenging because of where it is. It's kind of here, you know. And it's just not so pleasant really because it's like a bit finicky. But once you get it a bit loose, that now. See it's got this catalyzer bracket in where it's a pain in the bum. Once you get it loose, you can get your fingers on it that, and start to uh, undoing it. Essentially. Like that. And that's the main tension. So once that's undone, we just pull the guide off and we can start pulling sprocket wheels. Essentially. Of course there's going to be a lot of oil, so always have a nice rag handy, shove it down by the exhaust like that, and you don't have any more cleaning up to do later then, any more cleaning than what's necessary kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's, if it's tight, sometimes when they're older than this, 2018 this, oh, a bit old, slightly older, and then slightly sea, seaside salty conditions, these things are seasoned in big style usually, friggin' awful. Right. Once that's loose, we can pull out our lovely sprockets off, finally. There we are. One tension. And you can just leave that there, you don't need to do anything with it. Just leave it there for now. We don't need to take it out. Are you ready? Are you ready? Right, now we have to go on the back one. Are you ready? We need a big massive long spanner, don't we, Matt? Are you ready? Oh, that was loose, wasn't it? Thank you very much. You're a diamond, mate. Cheers. You're fantastic, huh? Right. It's always nice when you have good work colleagues to help you, isn't it? Right, let's pull this intake one off first. And then we'll put a nice big long screwdriver in here to stop the timing chain from falling off. I think. Quite handy. Uh, just put that there on the wiring harness and keep the chain up then, you see. There we go, just like that. Right, let's pull this off. I hope this has definitely got that fault because if it has, it's going to be great, isn't it? That's what we want, basically. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Don't seem too, none too cautious, this uh, Vanos wheel seems a bit iffy to me. None too cautious, let me tell you. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Well, the intake isn't so bad. It is. It has got a bit of a flattening on it, but it's not too bad. That's not so bad, is it? No, it's faulty. Look, you can see it's faulty. It's starting to go up, you see? It's buggered, that. There's movement in it. You have to put your finger on, you can feel it moving. I could probably put a dial gauge on that, but... If you take it from me, you can see it there. Maybe you can't on camera, but it's definitely moving. You put your finger on, it's knackered, that. Right, so that's faulty. Good. Next one we need to do now. Shut up. 
la 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 I wonder if I'll get done for copyright singing. I don't even know what a song that is, I think I just made it up, frankly. I don't know if it was the exhaust or the intake what was buggered, but we'll soon find out, won't we? Well, that intake one's knackered anyway, but it hasn't broke through yet, but it needs to be replaced. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Oh, it's knackered, look, it's burst right through as that, look, oh, it's knackered, look, it's burst right through, look, it's torn the thing, you see? So that's our fault, fan bloody tastic, so now we know what's wrong with the damn thing. Exactly as I thought, now, had a Vanos wheels damaged, very likely. So that has just started to go, now we'll have to replace the Vanos wheels anyway, in my opinion. And we'll open them up then and see what goes on with them. But that's what goes wrong with these B38s and B48s, in case you were wondering. This is a much better video than the last one because I'm actually stripping the thing, aren't I? Right, let's pull the sprockets off, keep the chain up. Now you see why I left that screwdriver there. Not the best of ideas, but it's best only thing I've kind of got. Right, so that's the intake off. Right, let's have a look at these in a, a bit more detail, shall we, essentially. So, that, as we've seen, is the issue. Essential piece is loose and just pushes it out. So what we'll do now is we're going to look at this exhaust van off and we're going to open it up and see if it's snapped the wing tips off inside. I don't think it will have done on this actually. But it might have done. Now the spring's going to release in a minute, so don't be alarmed. What? Well, spring's just gone. Yeah, man. You'll never get this back together, it's scrap now. But we've got new ones anyway, so. So everyone's happy kind of thing. Right, so, let's open this bad boy up and see if it's snapped it off. It has, it's snapped it right off. So it's exactly the same as the one I did my other video about. And it's literally snapped it right off. So if we'd have gone and just guessed and said, oh, it'll be all right, don't worry about it kind of thing. Well, no, it wouldn't be. It's just snapped there. If anyone can see that, you'll be uh, have better eyesight than me, let's say. Let's go ahead and pull it apart. There we are. Snap right off, look. Snap right off, is that? There you are. And that's your issue, that's why your vanus is jamming. And the cause, what's caused that, that fracture there now, is obviously that there. So that's that one. What about the intake? Have we got an issue with that? Not usually, because it's not so bad, that. But we'll have a look at it anyway. And see. So that's about it for this particular video. I'm going to make another one when I'm building up. I'm actually still kind of waiting for the parts to arrive. But I hope it's really useful for you because I can't stand them videos when I'm on YouTube. I was looking at a job today and I wanted some information about air conditioning pipe location. And guys really an awful load of crap for about half an hour. And one minute before the 15 minute video ended, I found the information I needed. So please give me some feedback if I'm chundering on a bit too much. I try and be as precise as I can and as concise as I can. With a video like that, you know, it's a huge job. You've got to show people how the tool works and give you a few tricks and tips. And this video is just for people who want to learn how to do it. That's all it is, it's as simple as that. But it's also an information video because although it's well known in BMW circles and dealerships and stuff about the Vanos fault, you might have one yourself. And indeed, I've had people asking me about this problem. We've got these cars with these engines, you might not know it. So I hope this video is going to shed a lot of light on a very, very common thing in our circle, but probably not in your circle. And that way you don't have to go in all these forums and lots of bro signs and rubbish. Do us a favour, if you like the video, give it a tick, give it a thumbs up, share it and subscribe if you haven't done because the channel's growing, it's not growing fast enough for my liking. And as someone just said on my TikTok account, my channels do deserve a lot more subscribers and a lot more what, traction, I think the guy says. I'm not that bothered about that, but it would be nice because all these videos, they're very, very time consuming, a lot of effort goes into editing and all that business. And uh, I'd like to be kind of, you know, recognised for it, if that makes sense. If it's possible. Then. Anyway, someone's just starting to grind up there, so a sander. So let's call it a day. See you soon for part two. Click your notifications, you won't miss it.